Hi class. Today's lecture is going to be on water soluble vitamins and fat soluble vitamins. We're going to look at the vitamins, we're going to look at their functions, we're going to look at how they participate in uh, metabolical reactions in our human body. However, it is still a level one nutritional uh, science course, so we're not going to dive into very, very deep and complex relationship between vitamins and minerals, uh, but we're just going to brush over them to understand what the vitamins are just for the purposes of this particular course. All right, so let's look at them. So we can have vitamins and minerals in the form of natural foods, or we can have vitamins and minerals in the form of supplements. It's particularly up to you to decide whether you want vitamins and minerals from real food or you want to get them from supplements. So the first lecture is going to be on water-soluble vitamins. So water-soluble vitamins are the vitamins that are soluble in water. It means that when they will be absorbed in blood, they will be transported in blood because they are water-soluble vitamins and blood is have water. There are also fat-soluble vitamins in contrast. So when you consume all of this, you don't really have to memorize which particular vitamin or mineral within this particular fruit or vegetable. So all you have to do is just pay attention to their pigments. So these are the general functions of vitamins energy metabolism, blood formation, protein and amino acids metabolism, antioxidant defense, gene expression, immune function, bone health, uh, and carbon metabolism. So there's a lot of functionalities of those vitamins. Um, but instead of just memorizing all that, we're going to separate and take our few important functionalities that are important especially for our class. So most of them, most of them, almost all of them participate in energy metabolism. So I'm going to put a star here. So the energy metabolism, B1, 2, 3, 5, 12, and the biotin, uh, 7. Amino acids metabolism and protein, and also antioxidants. So all of these are very important in, uh, for our class. Obviously, there are other functions. They are important for something else, but for our class. So here, not only water-soluble vitamins, but, but also uh, fat-soluble vitamins. So what are the water-soluble vitamins? B1, B2, B3, B5, B6, B7, B9, B12, and vitamin C. So there are nine of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there are nine water soluble vitamins. So we call them B complex vitamins and a vitamin C. So just remember that out of the water soluble vitamins, vitamin C is an antioxidant. Obviously, there are also carotenoids. There's also vitamin B2 riboflavin. There's also vitamin E, which is a fat soluble vitamin which is a fat soluble vitamin this is a water soluble vitamin but for our class um, the function of antioxidants as the vitamins participate in that particular uh, action which is very important and detrimental to our health we're gonna look at mostly these three particular vitamins vitamin A vitamin C and vitamin E are anti antioxidants so it's very easy to remember them in that particular way ace right you have full of aces when you're playing cards you have full of aces so you can beat any other card with aces so they are very important carotenoids are vitamin a so obviously there is vitamin b2 that is also antioxidant however let's only for our class only concentrate on all that because all other vitamins they also participate maybe not directly but they also participate indirectly in antioxidative properties um, so the water soluble vitamins are essential organic substances that needed in a small amount essential we must get them from food 
um, vitamin K, which is fat soluble vitamin, and biotin, which is water soluble vitamin, um, is uh, synthesized by bacteria. So the bacteria can make them. But overall, general we looking at vitamins they are essential we must get them especially vitamin c for example vitamin c is water soluble it is a very important antioxidant not only antioxidant uh participate participates in other very important reactions we're going to look at that at the end um so we cannot synthesize it so we must get it from food some animals can synthesize that vitamin and it helps them that protects them that protects their cell membrane so uh, also what is important so that they're essential and another thing important that uh, small amounts are stored in the body it means that they uh, cannot reach very toxic levels versus fat soluble vitamins they can reach very toxic levels and uh, body will save them body will store them in usually adipose tissue so for water soluble vitamins our toxicity is very low so when you're consuming fruits and vegetables and those vitamins that are part water soluble vitamins that are part of those products uh, you will basically peeing, peeing them out so when your urine is yellow after consuming supplements or uh, eating fruits and vegetables or even going through the IV, your urine is very yellow within a few hours or even less, half an hour. So your body just uh, based on no levels in the blood will just, okay, I don't need it. So with fat soluble vitamins, it is more dangerous because your body is able to save them, to store them in uh, adipose tissue and somewhere else. So they are readily removed by the kidneys and excreted in the urine. So what is oxidation reaction? So the oxidation reaction is when cell loses an electron. So let's say it's this cell, right? There's a cell membrane. And the cell loses an electron, it gains oxygen, right? And this is an oxidative process. So basically through the oxidative process, um, your cells are damaged the dna cell is damaged so that can lead eventually that can lead to cancer that can lead to mutation that can lead to death of a cell so the free radicals the free radicals can go and destroy the cell and when the cell is already destroyed when it's losing an electron or it's already lost an electron then the itself becomes a free radical because that cell can go I'm just exaggerating by saying can go, that cell can steal this, still like take it away from neighboring cells, this missing electron that the cell just lost. So in general, vitamins protect cells from free radical damage because they're antioxidants. So what is oxidation reduction or redox? So oxidation is the loss of electron results in positive net charge there's a gain of an oxygen, right? So there's oxidation reaction. So for example, if you have a fruit, right? So you cut this fruit in half, and then that's where the oxidation process starts. So it's basically a loss of electron and it is a gain of oxygen. So that's an oxidation. And the reduction, it is a gain of electron that results in negative uh, charge and it is a loss of oxygen. So um, I would say almost all of our processes in our body, they go through the redox reactions, oxidation, reduction, or reduction, oxidation, or redox reactions. So that's basically what happens. And the antioxidants, they basically kind of work on this principle. So you have a cell, right? For example, there's one cell, and then there is, uh, let me pick this color, that's another cell, right? So uh, I guess it's the same color. So let's say, right, it has paired electrons, right, in cell, right? Cell has paired electron. And for example, this electron is gone, right? This electron somewhere here. So this cell just lost an electron. So this cell itself becomes a radical. Something caused this process something that interfered with the certain process the electron is gone so now this cell that used to be a good cell now it is a free radical 
right? Now it is a free radical and it can destroy neighboring cells because it would want to steal that electron to be paired. However, there are vitamins that we consider them as antioxidants. Let's say vitamin E, vitamin C, and vitamin E are prime uh, antioxidants. So what they do, they just donate their own electron. Let's say this cell has paired electron. So what they do, they just donate its electron to this needed cell. So let's say this vitamin E donates its own electron and now this cell is happy, right? And very simple principle. So basically, before the cell starts losing an electron, and as soon as it loses the electron, the vitamin E just gives it back. And now the cell is a healthy cell. So first it was oxidized, oxidized, right? It just lost an electron, but Vitamin E just reduces the cell. Just give that electron, its own electron, back to this cell. So this is the oxidation loss. And this process would be reduction. Reduction. So vitamin E is antioxidant because it donates its own electron. So what happens? It's like a chain reaction. Well, I'm a good, I'm, I'm a nice and healthy cell. I just lost an electron. Oh my God, I'm a free radical. But guess what? Somebody else is going to give me that electron. Oh, I'm happy right now. So, and that's what happens. So it's like chain reaction. So, but when vitamin E just lost an electron, the vitamin E can become a free radical. But guess what? There's another vitamin. Let's say vitamin C donates its own electron to vitamin E and the vitamin E is stable. But vitamin C just lost an electron and the other vitamin will give it its own electron. So basically what happens, it's just like that. Oh, you just lost it. Here you go. Oh, you just lost it. Here you go. And this chain reaction never stops. So if there's a loss, there's a gain. However, if you are, for example, a hypothetical example, you are for some reason missing out this particular vitamin in your system that leads to oxidative stress. So that's the uh, antioxidant, let's say vitamin E, right? So that's the free radical, uh, it used to be good cell, now it's uh, lost an electron, right? This electron is here, for example. And this vitamin E donates its own electron. But then there is another vitamin, right? Oh, I don't know, vitamin C will give its own electron. But vitamin C loses electron. Another vitamin will reduce it, will give it back. So um, glutathione, another antioxidant. We will look at the glutathione as well. So that also very uh, important antioxidant in our system. So those vitamins, they oxidize or they basically reduce other, not oxidize, so they reduce other vitamins or other cells that are part of the tissue. So they reduce them, they give them, they donate their electrons to keep the tissues uh, healthy. So what are soluble vitamins? are organic molecules. Organic molecules meaning that uh, they have our carbon and hydrogen together. So when you're eating fruits and vegetables uh, that are, have water soluble vitamins in them, uh, they are organic substances. We require them in very small amount and that's what it is. So you can also look at water soluble vitamins and their primary role as a coenzymes. Minerals, if you remember, we'll look at the minerals, they're co-factors, and vitamins, they're co-enzymes. In general sense, they work in the vicinity of an enzymes. They're right next to the enzymes that uh, speed up reactions, that are lower activation energy for certain reactions. So we need vitamins. So they work within the vicinity of that enzyme. They help enzyme. That's why they call coenzymes. So what they do, they basically get the energy and they transport that energy. So by saying that, what I mean, again, it's very on a general principle. 
So when our body is going through the digestive process and we break down these molecules, we separate this um, energy yielding bonds. So we do separate. So we do come from poly into mono and these nutrients now we can absorb, right? Absorb them uh, into the blood. So whether these are polysaccharides, polypeptides, uh, fatty acids, triglycerides. So now we have mono units so we can absorb them in blood. So, but when our body separates these bonds, so then there's a yield of energy. So, and vitamins and minerals together, they are participating in energy yielding reactions. They help to transport this energy somewhere else. So let's say vitamin B2 can help synthesize, let's say vitamin B6 and some other bunch of vitamins. So they're like, like a transporters. They transfer or transport energy to other pathways, to other vitamins. So that's what the vitamins, that's what the core enzymes are because enzymes are also here, right, to break down these uh, particular bonds. Remember, amylase, protease, lipase, yeah, they separate this bond, they release, let's say if it's amylase, they release this glucose, right, let's say they separate glucose from fructose, and now we can absorb glucose separately, for example, and fructose separately, but through this hydrolysis, separation of those bonds, energy is here right now, so the energy needs to be grabbed, and transported somewhere else. And if you will be missing on certain particular vitamin, then probably there's going to be a problem with the transporting that particular energy. And I will show you with the, actually we're going to show you right now. So for example, like when we're, when there's a, um, process of digestion, glucose, or fatty acids, amino acids, so all these vitamins, they participate in um, energy metabolism. So they participate in those reactions, in energy yielding reactions, where this energy needs to be transported. And you see there are a bunch of those vitamins, and at the end of this, we need to produce this. Uh, so as we already established, uh, what are soluble vitamins' primary, primary role? and uh, function is they are coenzymes in energy metabolism. They also protect cells from free radical damage. So they're antioxidants. So um, through process, through uh, mechanical process, agitation, uh, using uh, heat, acids in order to process fruits and vegetables or even grains, um, there's a loss of certain vitamins and there's a loss of uh, certain uh, minerals. So then the, through the process of fortification or enrichment of foods, so those nutrients that were lost through the process, they could be added back, right? So they're adding them back. So, uh, for example, flour, wheat, pasta, corn, rice, breads, and far uh, farina, so those particular vitamins, B1, B2, B3, folate, and iron, they will put them back in the product. So, for example, they, uh, I don't know, they're making flour and certain vitamins were lost. So they will add them back through the process of fortification. So fortification, if, um, if the vitamins were not there or were in very, very, very insignificant amounts, so they're going to put them back. But enrichment, if those vitamins were there originally, uh, they can put even more. So they will make it even richer, that particular product. If the B1 was there and they want to put it even more of B1, so they will re-enrich it. They will give it even more of this particular vitamin because this in specifically this particular three ones, right, B1, B2, B3, are very important in energy yielding reactions, in, uh, in, in uh, carbohydrate metabolism, in protein metabolism, and fatty acids metabolism, as well as folate and iron. So they are easily destroyed in cooking and storage vitamins. Uh, versus minerals. Minerals are, you cannot destroy mineral uh, unless when you're steaming something, uh, let's say you're steaming 
vegetables and uh, you get the vegetables but that liquid there is uh, residual there is stay there in the pot all the minerals are there not all of that there's some minerals still in food so the minerals are there so if you get rid of that water so you just got rid of the uh, the minerals but minerals are elements right and elements are atoms so you cannot they cannot be destroyed you cannot create them nor destroy it so but vitamins yes you can break down their structure uh, because they are organic um, so easily destroy in cooking by water heat light uh, acidity and uh, even air um, so coenzymes and cofactors right we established these are the vitamins these are the minerals molecule, molecules that help enzyme or protein to function appropriately um, Coenzymes are organic molecules and quite often bind loosely to the active site of an enzyme and aid in substrate recruitment, whereas cofactors do not bind the enzyme. So they work with the, in the vicinity of an enzyme and they help to transport energy. For our class, this is more than enough. And, and you see here, like for example, uh, electron transfer, electron transfer, electron transfer, electron transfer. So uh, B1, B2, B3, uh, right? B3, um, transfer, 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 transfer. Not only electron transfer, but some other, uh, they're having some other molecules to be transported. So here they transport, uh, there's through the carboxylation, they transport carbon dioxide. Here's there's a removal of carbon dioxide from the molecule. Um, uh, here's the transamination, just the movement of certain amino, uh, amino acid groups from one place to another, uh, and so on. So as you see that vitamins are coenzymes, they help in energy yielding reactions. This is just a general term for vitamins. So before we even go to vitamins, I want to summarize three important functions for the vitamins. Because vitamins and minerals is just a standalone course, micronutrients, that if you would take it, you would spend the entire semester. So even though I'm going to talk a lot about vitamins, right, a lot, the in three important things that you need to know for vitamins uh, is this. So they are energy transporters. They are antioxidants um, for now. So let's look at the first vitamin, vitamin B1, coenzyme, crazy structure. So what happens when we are digesting products? So we already learned that through carbohydrate, through uh, digesting of carbohydrates, proteins, and fats, right, we need to break down these complex structures, right, in order to absorb this mono, right? So we need to break down polysaccharides into monosaccharides, we need to break down uh, polypeptides into amino acids and we need to break down triglycerides into free fatty acids so we can absorb them so about fruits and vegetables right fruits and vegetables for example these fruits and vegetables uh, they have carbohydrates proteins fats they also have vitamins and minerals so your body doesn't really need to digest vitamins and minerals what happens that, let's say this is a product, let's say grain, right? Grain, uh, which has also carbohydrates, proteins, and fats, and has vitamins and minerals. Also has fiber, right? So vitamins and minerals attached to something, to other molecules, to even fiber in this product. So all we need to do, let's say vitamins and minerals are attached. So in their in their natural form like this, where is it? Timing, like that. You do not need to break down these bonds. Your body doesn't really need to break down these bonds. So your body needs to separate 
separate this bond, break down this bond. So your body can take this vitamin, so it can absorb this vitamin. And that's where the bioavailability comes in hand. Remember we discussed this um, a process or the definition of bioavailability. So certain products are more bioavailable rather than uh, other products. So as a rule of thumb, animal products, animal are more bioavailable uh, more bioavailable than plant products because in plant products in plant products right in plant products vitamins and minerals they are attached they are attached to something in those fibrous products plants grain um, fruits vegetables nuts seeds so they're less bioavailable vitamins and minerals from plant so in animal products they're not attached to anything so your body will take them a lot easier so animal products are more bioavailable for vitamins and minerals than plant products however however there is an exception and the b1 is an exception so the b1 is more bioavailable from plant product than from an animal product that's why plant is bigger than than an animal all these nine vitamins they have a lot of functionality and as you already said that uh, there's a lot of information that you do not need to know because we uh, we never we, we never discuss a lot of processes here so you need to have um, you have you need to have prerequisites for that so uh, we're gonna go over the general functions and you already know the general functions is energy yielding reactions so energy transportation antioxidants and we're gonna look at deficiency of each of them and only deficiency you would need to know but i will i will specify on something to um to show you how they are important <clears throat> so they're free in plants so they're more bioavailable from plant products the particular time so we need them for um i'm i'm skipping i'm skipping and skipping so i don't want to take your time for that atp production energy yielding reactions synthesis of carbohydrates proteins and fats as i already said b1 b2 and b3 collectively that's what they do they they're important for that so the very important thing for thiamine, right? That's what you need to know actually as well, as that we need them for a healthy nervous system. So they just transfer energy to a nervous system and they basically make nervous system healthy. So if we are deficient in this particular vitamin and the deficiency is called beriberi, remember this berry berry so that can lead to peripheral neuropathy and edema so these two two deficiencies please remember peripheral neuropathy and edema just simply by missing on this particular vitamin so alcoholics they have problems with that also uh, not just that alcohol targets the nervous system it's just because your body needs to spend a lot of energy on to detoxifying alcohol and to metabolize alcohol and plus alcoholics are usually malnourished because their uh, regimen uh, nutritional regimen is deprived from uh, nutritious foods but nutritious i'm saying from vitamins and minerals so alcoholics they have this problem right um so remember right berry berry it translates i can't i can so that can lead to dry neurological uh problem or wet which which is edema so there's a dry berry berry neurological peripheral neuropathy um great reliance on glucose and um and the wet edema so that can lead to uh, coronary heart failure so it's accumulation of water and the heart has to work uh, overtime so the heart enlarges and it cannot eject 
um, good amount of blood. So it's harder for blood to, uh, it's harder for heart to in eject. So the left ventricle of the heart becomes very big and um, and that can lead to a problem. So there's also cerebral uh, beriberi. Um, so that's it. That's all you need to know for that. So where do we get this vitamin? Basically from uh, grain products, it's easier, easier to get. But obviously um, this particular vitamin also present in animal products. And liver, liver by the way, liver is a great source for varieties of vitamins and minerals. But who eats liver in 21st century? So the second vitamin is vitamin B2. You can also see here, right, this vitamin, we can get it from the varieties of products. So the name of that vitamin is riboflavin. Um, and flavin means yellow. So we can get this vitamin from mostly from dairy. And this product is uh, being famous for being in, da in dairy. This product is also coenzyme, participates in energy yielding reactions. Uh, we can get it pretty much uh, almost equally, but it is more bioavailable from uh, animal products. Um, easily destroyed, so this is very important to remember, remember that. So this particular vitamin is easily destroyed by excess light. So that's why milk in packages or in cartons or in cardboards um, is hidden over there. So it is, uh, or in opaque uh, plastic so otherwise the light can penetrate through the bottle and then it can kill um, this particular vitamin and we need this vitamin for a lot of processes so again this vitamin participates in the redox reactions even though I told you remember ACE you can also put it on your list also B2 so participates in redox, reaction, redox reactions. So every time you see redox, it means that it's reducing. So it gives the electron to a needed tissue, tissue made out of cells, right? And cells made out of molecules and molecules made out of atoms and so on. So in energy metabolism, right? Reduction, uh, redox reactions and uh, energy metabolism. So it reduces, it oxidizes uh, certain molecules, so in, in general, in redox reactions. Uh, ATP formation through uh, metabolism or carbohydrates, proteins and fats, however, specifically in fats. That you don't really have to remember, just in um, energy metabolism. Um, beta oxidation, it is important, right, for fatty acids, so that's what the beta oxidation, glutathione reductase. You do not need to know that, but I really want to mention that, that glutathione, it is a very important antioxidant. So the B2 works together with, a, um, with, this, particular, um, with this particular antioxidant as well. So we can find glutathione, by the way, we can find glutathione in vegetables in the cruciferous vegetables like uh, broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, asparagus, uh, cabbages family. So if you eat those particular cruciferous vegetables, uh, then you will be, uh, you will basically detoxify your system. So it's a natural detox. So glutathione reductase. So that's very important for this uh, B2 to be present here. And by the way, um, just for the visual purposes. You see, for example, uh, to synthesize uh, glutathione, you need B2, right? But even to synthesize vitamin B6, not only you need B2, you need iron uh, also together to work with that. Or for example, to synthesize, to synthesize vitamin B3, you need vitamin B2, you need iron, you need B6, you need uh, tryptophan uh, to make active vitamin A, you need B2. To make active folate, you need B2. So B2 from every angle is crazy important. You do not need to know that, but I just want to show you that uh, it is very important to have vitamins in general because they 
transporting or transferring uh, energy from one reaction to another. It is like, for example, you have a train D and then you need to get to train, I don't know, to, I don't know, uh, whatever, to train seven, right? But to get from D to seven, right, both, both pathways could be working properly, but to get from here to here, you need a transfer. I'm not really sure if F, F train New York, you need a transfer, but you have energy, but the energy cannot get here, so you need to transfer. Or you need to transport it from here, from point A to point B. So that's what the vitamins are doing. They're transporting or they're transferring reactions. For this class, this is all you need to know. So, and the deficiency of this particular vitamin is pretty gruesome. So deficiency is called a riboflavinosis. So that can lead to chelosis, stomatitis. It is an inflammatory process. It's inflammation of a tongue, of mouth, mouth and uh, cracked lips, right? Why? Signs and symptoms, glossitis, inflammation, deficiency of vitamin B2, B3, B6, folate and B2 and B12. And remember, B2 participates in synthesis of B3 and also in synthesis of B6 and also in um, in activating vitamin uh, uh, folate, right, B9. So without this B2, that can lead, and by and these vitamins, they have their own pathways, and they also depend on something else, and on something else, and on something else. It's like you have all this metabolic process, and the traffic lights are not working, anywhere and their transfers cannot transport or transfer and that can lead to this uh, damaging reactions so already inflammatory state in your body already telling you that there is a critical problem there is a critically something uh, something going on and the vitamins and minerals are almost every time is the case so it is better to prevent than treat this the inflammatory process that is already progressed to this particular stage. So the prevention on eating fruits and vegetables or taking supplements uh, is very important. So all you have to think is just Roy G. Eat them on, based on their pigments. I'm going to come back to this, to Roy G. If B1 and B2 was very important, B3 is crazy important. So if this is a person, <laughs> if this is a person, right? So B3 works or niacin works on every, every, every level. So if I will show you the functionality of vitamin B3, I can spend like 20, 30 minutes just uh, going, order, uh, going over each of those pathways. So what's important is that vitamin B3 niacin participates in at least, at least, 200 different types of energy uh, metabolical reactions. However, for our class, all you need to know that, again, energy transportation, antioxidant, and some deficiency. So we're going to look at the deficiency of this particular vitamin. So um, maybe there's something else, right? So we already looked at B3 needs a, let's say, tri uh, tryptophan. I'm not going to get there. And we need B2, and we also need vitamin B6, and we also need iron. So they have to work together in order to make this particular vitamin. So for our class, we do, need, do not need to know that. Uh, synthesis of tryptophan, a reduction of anabolism, steroids, hormones. So uh, remember this also, that uh, niacin, we need niacin for vitamin C reduction. Why it is important? Because vitamin C reduction is a uh, antioxidant. So let's say you have vitamin A, right? You have vitamin C, you have the vitamin E. Vitamin C reduces vitamin E, right? Uh, then when vitamin C reduces vitamin E, somebody else needs to reduce vitamin C because vitamin C just lost its electron. It just gave this electron to vitamin E. So guess what? Vitamin B3 will reduce it, right? Will reduce, meaning that it will donate its own electron. Because vitamin C was very good enough to give its own electron to vitamin E. 
So vitamin E is, is like, let's skip that. Vitamin E works in uh, right in the vicinity of cell membranes. Um, I think when we're gonna go through the fat soluble uh, vitamins lecture, I'm gonna talk about vitamin E, but for now. So vitamin B3, this is NADPH, so this is a coenzyme. So that's, a, um, that's important for a vitamin C reduction. And also vitamin B3 uh, also um, reduces glutathione, also that very important. So let's look at, um, at the deficiency of vitamin D, pellagra, rough skin. So just by looking at this, and we call it four Ds, right? Four Ds. So that's a, a progress. That's a progress of a deficiency of this particular vitamin. So you can see that it is very important because uh, there's that can lead to deficiency, can lead to dermatitis, then can lead to dementia, then that's nervous problem, right? Dermatitis, it's skin. Uh, our integumentary system, it is a reflection of our health. So if there's a little dot on our skin, right, we're really screaming, oh my God, something's going on, right? It's an inflammatory process, or there's like a precancer, or then it's cancer, there's like benign, malignant, so a little dot. So it, it could be itchy, it could be scratchy. Um, so the skin is a reflection of your health. So that's very important. Uh, dementia, diarrhea, if it's a, I don't know if it's acute or chronic diarrhea, that's a problem because we're losing on electrolytes, we're losing on nutrients, we're not absorbing, diarrhea could lead to malabsorption, so something already happened in, 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 in our body, certain pathways are not getting energy, and it's uh, diarrhea, and the diarrhea can quickly, quickly lead to death because you're losing on very important uh, minerals, electrolytes, that can lead to death pretty fast. And loss of, um, loss of liquid as well. So, pellagra is the name for, uh, for, uh, for the niacin deficiency and for this. I was thinking, I was thinking about uh, dry hands. Um, because I remember somebody asked me, like, it was winter time, if I might have dry hands, do I have a deficiency of, of niacin? Not really, but the der der dermatitis, not just in hands, but basically throughout the entire body, it's a first kind of, uh, if, if it's a dry skin throughout the entire system, uh, it could be a first uh, symptom or signal, but you have to look, you have to look at the blood test and you got to go to the doctor, basically. Um, so the pantothenic acid. So from every side, think of pantothenic, pantothenic acid and the CoA is a bus. So we need this bus in order to enter citric uh, acid cycle um, or TCA cycle. So basically, if I will show you here, you see here's B5 and this is the acetyl CoA, this CoA. This CoA needs to bring energy in general needs to bring energy inside here that there's magic going on here so that's what we need for for now not for now for this class so used throughout the body in energy metabolism carries protein and many biosynthetic reactions but again we can get it from varieties of foods like even um, right we're in the slide uh, we can get it from varieties of foods uh, whether it is um, yeah, it's not working. Whether it is uh, animal products or plant products. Both equally bioavailable from um, animal products and plant products. Use of glucose and amino acids, fatty metabolism, also ATP production, energy. Um, so the deficiency for this particular vitamin is a burning uh, fit sensation. It is a neurological problem. So it's a small uh, fiber neuropathy. Um, yes, true in nuts and seeds, there's a lot of this vitamin. 
So the next vitamin is vitamin uh, B6. You see, we'll, we're progressing pretty fast, but, but then again, um, each vitamin has a lot of functionalities besides transportation of energy or transferring of energy or being an antioxidant. So the vitamins, they have other functionalities, but we're not discussing for this class. So there's a three form or family of three compounds of this par uh, particular paradoxal, paradoxine or paradoxamine, not that important. So what's important for this vitamin to remember besides its energy transportation is a critical for amino acids metabolism. So when we're consuming amino acids, we or we're consuming proteins and your body breaks down amino acids and then those amino acids they go through their uh, through those uh, through their own um, um, metabolical processes to synthesis we need this particular vitamin because this vitamin will play a um, like a chaperone or or a transporter that that's the role it will take um, making non-essential amino acids, uh, we discussed non-essential amino acids, making B3 niacin, uh, if you remember, right, if you remember, obviously I said not even try to remember it, but um, B6 here, you see, making niacin, helping, not by, not, not by itself. Um, Synthesis of histamine. Histamine. Um, it is important, but histamine is uh, something that is a part of the mast cells, right? So when there's an allergic reaction, so the histamines are being released. Um, and that, that's how you know that you have an allergy to the particular, let's say, pathogen or pollen. Uh, that uh, anything that enters your system and that can lead to uh, inflammatory response. Um, neurotransmitter synthesis is very important. But then again, it's proteins, uh, proteins, and it's, I mean, like GABA, uh, very important neurotransmitter. Glutamic acid, very important neurotransmitters. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is the uh, this is the excitatory neurotransmitter. This is the inhibitory neurotransmitter that actually uh, decreases pain or makes your pain more duller instead of being a sharp pain. So this B6 PLP vitamin is just transfers or transports or moves around uh, certain molecules from one place to another. So that's very important. So deficiency of this particular vitamin, which is important to remember, is an anemia. It is microcytic or, or hypochromic anemia. So the differences between those two is that microcytic, um, it is um, um, that, that the red blood cells are immature, right? They, they're small. And hypochromic are that uh, they're kind of pale, like chrome, chrome. Chrome is a color, so they pale instead of being uh, bright red. Bright red meaning that they're full of oxygen. So there's hemoglobin and carries are, are red blood cells. The hemoglobin is part of the red blood cells. Red blood cells transports oxygen. So uh, B6 um, leads, deficiency of B6 can lead to anemia. Um, red blood cells are also made from proteins, so and amino acids. Um, Low heme production decreases oxygen available into tissue, also causes chelosis of the cellulose So, as a as an exception, remember I said that certain vitamins they can lead to toxic uh, levels. So too much of B six can be toxic, but probably usually from subs from supplements. So from foods, it's very hard to get intoxicated by certain vitamins. Uh, and minerals because how much can you eat of those, right? So if you're eating normal portions and you're eating varieties of fruits and vegetables or even carbohydrates, proteins, and fats, uh, it is hard. Uh, by taking supplements, yeah, on top of that. So that can lead to uh, severe neurological problems. So let's look at vitamin B7 or biotin. Participates in carboxylation reactions. Carboxylation is basically addition of carbon dioxide to compounds. 
Uh, again, not important for our class. Again, ATP production and metabolism of carbohydrate, proteins, and fats, transportation of energy. But remember that that B7 can also be synthesized by bacteria in our large intestine. It doesn't really mean that we do not really have to eat biotin and it's going to be enough for bacteria to synthesize that. Um, you still need to consume it because we have good bacteria, bad bacteria, so I'm um, not pretty sure which one uh, can actually participate in those uh, syn synthesis uh, reactions. But but we're gonna skip on that so it is a very strange deficiency very strange deficiency for this particular vitamin uh, why strange deficiency in 21st century strange maybe 100 years ago when people used to consume raw egg whites and you probably seen in the movies uh, especially those people who was uh, like singers, right? Before they go on the stage, they were drinking raw egg whites. Uh, I've seen it in the movies like that. So there's a protein avidin, that's the protein, right? So that, that, that hardened part, like when you boil an egg, and that white, mushy, right? That the sleazy part becomes uh, hardened. That's what happens through the process of uh, protein denaturation, when protein denatures with the addition of heat. So that protein, and that's how our proteins in that particular um, state of matter in our body, it's kind of fluidishly like uh, particles, they get hardened. So when they get hardened, they lose a, their integrity and they cannot perform anymore. That's, I just described that normal proteins in our body. So when we have that egg, right, so that, that white part that get denatured is called avidin. So, and when people are consuming it raw, that avidin binds to biotin and can inhibit the absorption. So that's what I'm saying is this uh, pretty strange because um, do you know any people who consumes raw egg whites? But if you're consuming raw egg whites on a daily basis, and not just one, but dozen, 12 of them, that can lead to a deficiency. The reason we still have that deficiency as a deficiency for this particular vitamin, because it is probably there is some group of people who consume them in, in, uh, in this excessive form. So... Signs and symptoms, depression, hallucination, infection, hair loss, pull muscle, control seizures. So basically deficiency of any vitamin can lead to a lot of, uh, a lot of um, health problems. Um, where do you get... All right. So folate. So folate, folate it is we're getting from plant products right folate folate b9 um folate is important as in the coenzyme and also important for prevention of anemia uh, folate can mask b12 deficiency when taken together like well let's say b uh, can mask deficiency of B12. So by taking too much of folate that can mask the deficiency of B12, meaning that if you are deficient in B12 and B12 are, we can only get precisely from animal products, not from plant products. And B9, we can get precisely from plant products. By eating too much of B9, which is folate, you are masking the deficiency of B12. What's important for this particular vitamin is the prevention of neural tube defect or spinal bifida. So, and this particular uh, vitamin is being recommended to consume, especially for women uh, that are capable of becoming pregnant. Even in preconception, they really have, uh, they really should have um, certain level of B9 of folate in their system 
because when they become pregnant, uh, that's the that could be a problem if they're deficient in B12. Why? Because the development of embryonic development in the early stages can lead to a uh, neural tube defect when there's a deficiency of this particular vitamin. So the neural tube, right, that's a when there's a development of a uh, nerve cord, right, when there's a development of uh, spinal cord, nerve cord, of the central nervous system. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, I think it's from zero to two weeks. That's where the where there's a development of a neural tube. So that's why it's called neural tube, because the, the neural tube will become this, right? So that's the neural tube. And from that, the body starts developing. So I think that between zero and two weeks after the fertilization, fusion, right? So let's say sperm plus egg, right? Leads to fertilization, fertilization. And after the fertilization, there's this first cell. So within this time, if the person is deficient, f is deficient with, uh, with, the, with, the fol uh, with the folate, that can lead to this problem. So that's why it is very imperative to have a certain levels uh, of the folate in the body to prevent that. Doesn't really mean that you can prevent that, but but it is possible to prevent that. Um, so the women capable of becoming pregnant should take folic acid because folic acid is a supplement, and the folate is the is the real. F uh, form of uh, from fruits and vegetables so folic acid supplements or consume folic acid fortified foods folate supplementation decreases risk that's what i'm saying that it's a decreases risk it's not preventing even if the levels are going to be normal or even higher it's there's still possibilities so, so vitamin b12 so vitamin b12 as i mentioned um about folate, so the folate can mask the deficiency of vitamin B12. So vitamin B12 we get from animal product. So for vegans it's very important because uh, this particular vitamins they can only get from the animal products, so they need to have supplements. And the vegetarians they don't really care because they can get it from dairy products, from fish products, so and from eggs. So that's where they can get this particular vitamin. Um, so the deficiency important to remember this for vegans and also remember that folate can mask b12 deficiency and uh that particular deficiency right this too can lead to pernicious anemia or macrocytic anemia or anemia so pernicious anemia is an ability to absorb b12 just remember it like that so that's actually tied to intrinsic factor but for this class not important so remember i told you in the beginning remember roy g right so antioxidants right so let me show you this antioxidants again roy g red orange yellow green all fruits and vegetables that have pigments red orange yellow and green are good antioxidants good detoxifier because they have to protect themselves when they grow nobody else will protect them so when we eat them they also protect us some animals are able to produce vitamin c we are as animals we cannot produce vitamin c so we need to consume them so if on daily basis you consuming red orange yellow and green you those fruits and vegetables you will be a uh, healthy person so to support to prevent any type of problems you need to consume these varieties of fruits and vegetables so vitamin c is a citrus fruit not only found in red orange yellow also found in green like kiwis for example or uh, brussels sprouts uh, or even the potatoes. So why, why you would ask vitamin C is in here? It means that when the potato grows, 
he needs to be protected from oxidative stress, oxidative damage, from free radicals, from reactive oxygen species. So the vitamin C is there. So vitamin C, the reason vitamin C is everywhere, because it needs to prevent those uh, toxic effects on, the on this particular product. So, and when we're consuming vitamin C together with products, they are protecting us. So also vitamin C is important for collagen, for collagen production. Vitamin C enhances calcium absorption. Vitamin C enhances iron absorption. Vitamin C participates in reactions that uh, synthesizes collagen. And the collagen is our tissue. Collagen is very important for our tissue. It keeps our gums healthy. So vitamin C can be made from glucose by all plants and most animals, except by humans. So we cannot make this. Uh, recharging of non-enzymatic antioxidant, recharging of enzymes except donates electrons, donates electron like to vitamin E, uh, collagen production. So remember this and antioxidants. So to summarize that, energy transporters, antioxidant and deficiency for each vitamin. Know the name, know the name of a deficiency for each vitamin and know the deficiency that a person can get if they deficient in that particular vitamin. So this chart is pretty simple. Coenzymes, transportation of reactions, right? Or transferring <coughs> um, energy. All of them except vitamin C. Pretty simple, right? all of them coenzymes uh, energy yielding reactions energy metabolism energy metabolism carbohydrates proteins and fats to strip this energy all of them except folate and vitamin c antioxidant functions none of them directly so the vitamin c I'm sorry, the vitamin C is directly participates in, um, um, in functionality of, of being as antioxidants. So as you see with water soluble vitamins, it is pretty much simple, but I had to go through the entire lecture to explain all that. So the next part is gonna be fat soluble vitamins. Fat soluble vitamins are even easier, um, but they have different functionalities. So there's only four of them. All right, there next.